Welcome to Irish Web TV. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Positive Age for the use of the studio here in Drummolly and Cavan, and to Syro for the use of the broadband. Well, unfortunately, folks, due to the lockdown, which is worldwide now, we are not able to get out and about. But, folks, I'd like to to invite you all to look into our archives, see all our Cavan TV news and views programs and th to all the fantastic interviews we did over the last five years. And that includes the St. Patrick's Day Worldwide Parade to the World. Now, but this evening, we're going to visit a sitting room in London. Now this man, he's a Cavan man and he's not one to gossip, but Hello, John McEntee. <laughs> I am what you got to call you. You got it wrong, please. I mean, please, I'm an absolute nightmare in lockdown in London for a gossip columnist trapped in London in his home. Yeah, so, how does that okay. work out, John? Because. You have to get out and about to do your work. I'm well, sure it's killing well, you apart from anything else. Well, I do. I, I, I do have four, uh, a four-day-a-week column on the mail called Even Podcast, which is a gossip column, and I've been doing it for five weeks in total isolation without any gossip. And it's very depressing because um, I can't read anything. You know, uh, it's, it's more severe in than it is in London. At least we can sneak out. Uh, I can speak out to women in common and have a have a. Um, cycle or whatever, you, you're more trapped than I am. Mm. But it is difficult. Every one of the newspaper people are all working from home, including myself. The editors in Somerset, the subs are all at home. So we have to send our copy to lawyers who are at home, get the editor to read it who's at home, and create a newspaper um, from an empty building in, in Kensington. But it is, it's had its complications. Um, fact is that you don't see all the people who give you a hard time, you don't see the lawyers who give you a hard time. John, how long do you think hard. you can go on with the, the depressing thing about this um, lockdown is uh, not just in Carbon or in London, it's the fact that it's infinite. We don't know how long it's going to go on for. Mm. And um, it yeah, if we knew it was going to finish on the 1st of June or the 1st of July, we'd all uh, uh, make arrangements. But because we don't know, and, and um, you know, Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, almost died, um, he's now back, in the, but he's he's a much chaste figure. I mean, the feeling is that he's not as adventurous as he might have been before he got ill. So he may not want this lockdown to finish. And I'm doing a story tomorrow um, about Cameron McIntosh, who is the multi-millionaire uh, theatrical producer in the West End. And he has, um, you know, created Les Miserables, he created Oliver Twist, he created all sorts of shows. He is saying, if the government are saying here that um, the social uh, distancing, which you have as well, if this social distancing goes on until the end of the year, he's, he's going to close all his theatres, eight theatres in London, and pack it in because he thinks that you cannot have a theatrical show with social no distancing. People. And um, mm -hmm. it's like the Arabians. I mean, um, Michael O'Leary said quite rightly this idea that EasyJet have of leaving the middle seat empty um, is ludicrous because part, part of the fact that you're, you're, you're um, breathing the same air as going around, around the Arabians. The fact is that uh, airlines like Ryanair cannot sustain their business plan if they've only got um, empty seats. They have to be full. So all of these questions have been answered in social distancing. It's all very well standing away from people. I saw your very, very good um, uh, film of um, the late John O'Connor's funeral. Uh, um, a lovely man, great credit to Carmen. And uh, um, by the way, it was a really nice uh, production, I thought, because um, uh, I just tuned into it. And I noticed outside the cathedral, there was social distancing, everybody was standing apart, and that's great. Um, you're not allowed to do that here. In, in London, the, um, people are having private funerals. The, the, the undertaker takes them away and they go to crematoria. There's not the same, there's yeah. a wonderful bit of respect, I thought, outside mm. the cathedral, with people standing in social distancing, well, away from 
the, uh, the hearse. Yeah, that is, I suppose, an Irish answer to a very weird situation. And I was speaking yeah, earlier yeah. To, to my other guest, and um, they were saying how the community has come together and it's been brought out of us now. The goodness in the community is coming out at a time like this. We begin to, to, to look out for each other more. It's bringing all this, this out. But having said yeah. that, we're not used to a life in lockdown. Actually, the Irish, when the sun shone last week, Irish got it very hard to stay, to stay at home. It was into the cars and go somewhere. And of course, then you had, you must shut down, you must lock down. John, you're right. If we had a date when all this was going to be finished, we would be able to cope much better. But we just have to keep going. I know, but I think economically, the, the, the debate that's going on in Britain is um, economically or um, compassionately. Do we want to give up the economy completely and everybody go bust, save 200,000 lives? Or do we want to go back to work and allow people to die so that we can continue to make uh, a living? And that is a real dilemma because at the moment, the entire British economy is in lockdown. It's in but they're deep freeze. Um, my, my son, who runs a PR company, he's lost um, eight of his ten clients, and um, he's keeping his staff on, his 12 staff, but he said he can only last another month. But the, the, the debate is going to have to be uh, carried on, not just in Dublin or in London, but all around the world is, do we continue this antisocial lockdown in the hope that we save lives, or do we go back to work and take the hit. In America, they're taking the hit, even though in Trump has lost, I think, 58,000 people, which is the exact number of people who died in the Vietnam War. But he's saying, oh, it could be two or 300,000 um, if he hadn't been such a brilliant president. Mm -hmm. We all know he isn't. But we have to think, do we want to continue to have social distancing, the closure of homes, of restaurants, the collapse of business, save an uh, ill-defined number of lives? At yeah. the moment, we don't know how many people. Uh, Ireland has a relatively small number of deaths, but, but uh, per head of population, it's not that small. No, and I think the only way we will ever know an answer to that is in retrospect. Which was the better the way to Indeed. go? Let the economy, let the country, and, and it's not only Great Britain that's like that. It's it's, it's European, it's American, it, it's worldwide. It's it's brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts. We're all in the same boat. Actually, the people who are in the front line, who are in fear of uh, getting the illness, they're the lucky ones because they're the ones with a job to go to every day. But it has its price. Um, yeah. That's the way it is. We have to make make the best of a bad situ situation. Um, of course, John, that'll stop you getting back to Calvin for, for a while, It'll stop everybody from going anywhere, and you had a family occasion coming up soon, um, which is sad, yeah. but at least we have this kind of communication, you know, Skype, Zoom, house sure, parties. Yeah, yeah. At least yeah, this works sometimes. I mean, if only you've done a generation ago, I, I, I worked in the Irish press and all the TV press on Sunday, press in the 70s. Now, can you imagine if we had this huge lockdown in the 70s where you'd have to be sending uh, letters out by pigeon posts and motorcycles? The, the wonderful technology where, I mean, I called my office um, two weeks ago because I had a problem with my computer, and the guy on the switchboard, I said, Are you in the office? He said, No, I'm at home. They'd moved the switchboard of an enormous company to his home. Now, without the technology we've got, we couldn't, um, I, I couldn't do my job, and I'm very, very lucky. I mean, I, there's an awful lot of people who are not nearly as lucky as to be able to work from home, to be able to earn salaries, um, and, and to continue. So many people can. You know, the people in, 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 in the pub industry must be destroyed by this, or in restaurants, Absolutely. or in uh, theatres. Uh, and it's an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying is the debate must, must continue about whether or not we want to allow the lockdown to destroy the lives of hundreds or of thousands of people, up again. or do we mm -hmm. want to somehow Create ease what, our way save out of lockdown and yeah. allow uh, whereas it's interesting, for example, in New Zealand, um, I did a story to my colleague tomorrow about the Queen calling the Prime Minister of New Zealand to congratulate her because New Zealand have banished the virus. Um, they literally uh, just had a massive lockdown to stop people coming into the country, which is stupid because people are still flying in and out of Britain 
from all sorts of infected areas. They locked down the entire country. Uh, they had a rigorous and brutal campaign of social isolation. And now they're going back to normal business next week because they've actually found the virus is not in New Zealand. It's vanished, uh, or it's being vanished. And mm. where it's still lurking, um, like Boris Johnson said, like a mugger, um, waiting to, to, to keep keen you over. And, and uh, somebody else compared it to uh, its lifespan starting in China. It's now a very, very angry teenager. It will get old and it will die. And at the moment, it's an angry teenager that's destroying the world. Yeah. That's... We actually... Uh, I don't know if anybody has anything to look forward to. Our, our only looking forward to it is just seeing this thing, that, as you said, in New Zealand, to see it banished or to see it disappear. And listening to the news and all the current affairs programs, it doesn't seem, and I hate to sound pessimistic, to happen anytime soon. John, we just have to get on with life as it is, and it's different. Uh, we're, we're doing yeah. different things. Uh, uh, we can't exercise within two kilometres of our homes. So what does that mean? So that means families of five, four or five people and all the dogs yeah. and the children's bikes yeah. are out on the road. And they were never out on the road before. We just we go from one extreme to the other in points of safety. But that's life yeah. as it is. There's enough for us to get us around. There's enough for food if we don't panic. Um, you can go to the off license, yeah. so we're okay there. Um, of course, funerals are different <laughs> now. You, you mentioned the difference in the funerals early, earlier, and uh, we can live, funerals are being live streamed now, which is so yeah, solace yeah. to families and things like that. But that. It's quite, it's quite a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a hell of a different cabin than the cabin you left so many years ago. Well, it's not really. I mean, the thing is, I suppose um, um, uh, uh, my parents would have thought, oh, God, they had the emergency. And the emergency was there for the Second World War. But all that involved was shortage. Because at least, as the same, um, the Blitz and the rest of it, they had social contact. They could go to pop They could go to Zoom. Um, whatever. We're not actually having any physical contact with people. People are, are deprived of their grandchildren or mm. even their loved ones who are dying in hospital in the camp uh, reach out and hold them or kiss them. Mm. And uh, that is the difference. Whereas I, I suppose a, a tragedy or a, a was in the Second World War where they called the emergency. It, I don't think it was anything compared to this because in the emergency, certainly in, the, in, in areas of Thencourt or Ireland uh, with a border, you didn't have um, a short shortage, you had, but you didn't have a prospect of a, a, a pandemic killing so many people. I mean, the last case, probably in the Spanish flu in 1919, which killed more people than all the people who died in the First World War, and Ireland was a, a, a great victim of the Spanish flu. It was a worldwide pandemic, but um, it seemed to not be as quite as it was a flu. This is not a flu. It's a completely strange virus that people are alleging it's been man-made. They're not sure. I mean, you're a pharmacist. You might not know more about creating. No, I can't say. The fact is, <laughs> well, you know, the, the Chinese are blaming the Americans, saying that the Americans introduced it in Wuhan. Uh, other people are saying it might be laboratory. It might be people eating bats, transferred it to humans. The fact is that it's a pandemic that yeah, until mm. we get a vaccine, we may all be living in this sort of um, world of self-isolation where we can't rub shoulders with our friends, our family or anybody else. That's my next question. Will we get to grips with the new normal, as it's called? Well, we are. I suppose we are. I mean, they're, they're, but uh, we feel the, it's the, temporary. Yeah, but the argument is raging that the, the cure might be worse than the, the affliction, that the cure will kill more people uh, because of depression, of losing your job, suicide, um, than the fact that you kill them. It, 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 I mean, are people happening. are incredibly depressed. And if you lose your job and you're isolated and you're on your own and you think, no, and you know, it, it does rob you of the future. Although on a, on a slightly brighter note, I, I tend to sneak out after a finish with Colin and cycle up to Women's the Comet, but there's a Turkish guy called Levant <laughs> who still runs. Um, uh, a lorry that served the best bacon sandwich in the history of the world. 
and I had a cup of tea and a sandwich and I went to him yesterday in the sunshine, which is now gone, and he said to me, um, you don't believe, uh, you know anybody who died of this virus? And I had to admit I did He said, I don't think this virus exists. I think it is a lie. I think it is a lie. Brown sauce? And I said, yes, thank you. But the fact is, there are people who haven't been touched by it who believe it's some sort of strange conspiracy, very much Donald Trump's fake news. Yeah. But the fact is, it isn't a lie. It's happening. Uh, and in, uh, in Carbon, uh, I'm told that because of the transfer of a lot of patients from Dublin, you, um, the illness spiked in, in Carbon. You know, there's a lot more people in, in the area. Well, that uh, is a bit of reporting in the local felt and um, it's not correct. There is no transporting of patients to Cavan. Um, no, it's a lie. That's fake news. Fake news. Um, stand to be corrected news. Uh, but to just put this forward, the, the record straight on that. Cavan has very good testing. So they're coming out with results and they're, they're getting yeah, yeah. viruses. But 80% of those people, throwing out a wild figure there, are, been, are treatable at home and it's mild symptoms. Like the amount of people yeah, in the yeah. hospital, in comparison to, to Dublin, is very low. It's in its 20s. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. not to be compared with the Dublin hospital. Yeah. But it's an interesting statistic that um, just the week before the lockdown in both Ireland and Britain, um, 60,000 people went to Cheltenham every day. In Cheltenham, the Gold Cup, with racing festivals. And apparently, I heard that Mullingar had a huge spike because there was eight or nine guys came back from the Cheltenham Festival, had a few wins, went in a bit of a pub crawl, and infected the entire town. <laughs> and um, here, um, whether that's hearsay, I don't know, but what is a fact is that the, the statistics of the number of people infected all across Britain. There is a huge spot in Cheltenham where they had the Gold Cup festival the week before we all realised this was an And mm. um, there are more patients uh, in this area of Cheltenham than anywhere else in Britain. So it was the one big event that should have been cancelled. Yeah. Uh, but the end of a football match, there was a. Uh, yeah, going but in retrospect, now, well, now, they, now they see the damage that it caused. But, John, on a brighter note, um, Tell the folk there uh, on lockdown, uh, what would your advice to be to them? It can be cute and get out and about and do, and do some things that alleviates the darkness. What would you say to them? Well, I think a lot of people, what you should do is, I mean, it, 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 uh, it's probably because I'm a journalist, but I think a lot of people should keep a diary. They should literally just um, sit down and in the morning, then, you know, if they're looking out and it's not particularly nice weather, is to sit down and write a diary just on the day. Don't chronicle the number of people who are dying. Just chronicle their own experience, even for their own children and grandchildren. Because people will be talking about this um, yes, when we're old and saying, what did you do during this um, uh, lockdown? What did you do when you were locked up for six months or hopefully less than six months? So the fact is, people maybe should sit down and jot down their thoughts or even talk into the tape recorder and say, here we are, it's, it's, um, it's the third week of... I couldn't get into done stores, there were 12 people in front of me. All of these minutiae that sound quite um, uninteresting are in fact fascinating because the, the idea that we all have to stand outside supermarkets uh, keeping a two metre distance uh, or I, I would say a six foot whatever distance um, are all amazing and, and you know why do we have a shortage of toilet rolls? All of these things for our children and grandchildren are going to be amazed. Daddy, Mammy, what did you do when all this was going on? And it's not a bad idea it's just to sit down and do a, a, even a whimsical note to the friends and relatives that you're not seeing and saying, dear uh, Anya, dear John, and just write it all down in your own words. And you'd be amazed when all this is over, if you go back to it and think, I'm so glad I did that. It was an extraordinary time. And, um, and you can obviously stick in some of the events, like Leo Bobardica going off to the hospital for the day or whatever, um, uh, the actual events that are happening, or is Kim Young's son dead or whatever. Uh, and my view is that it, it, to fill that time, um, it's not a bad idea to do that. I mean, I, I saw there was a wonderful letter in the Irish Times of the day, the headline was, um, for God's sake, open the pubs or we'll all be alcoholics. Now, because people are probably drinking a lot more. Um, yeah. With no pubs. So because they don't have to get up the next work for work the next day and drive yeah. in the car. That's a very they good don't. idea, John. So, saving a lot of money. 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe people are saying he loads of money, but you know, with uh, being locked in. I don't know mm. if it's the same in Ireland as it is in, in, in Britain. But here, they're frozen all the um, house uh, sales, and that to me is, is a tragedy. People can people in the middle of buying a house being frozen. That's people that. who are in the middle of you know yeah. moving have been told no. It's, and I don't know if if, if, if the estate agents are frozen things in the same way in Ireland. But um, all all of these. Sort of spin-offs make make life even harder for, for people who are trying to uh, endure, and um, uh, it might change our culture because one of the great things about Ireland, which I love, is I go home and I go to the Abbey Bar or whatever, and I see my friends, and we're all hug and mugger. Now we may be shouting at you other from across the bus office <laughs> in the future. Mm, over the be pants, over the pants. Scared. John, you've got folk all over the world. I'm sure you'd like to give a like shout out to them. Well, I would like to say briefly, well, you see, um, you mentioned earlier our, our um, uh, we had a family get together next week with um, uh, my dear sister Joan's uh, daughter, her mom is 21, and I don't think Joan, uh, Maud quite understands why none of us are going to be there for the party. And uh, last year, my uh, Anne brilliantly came home after ringing Northern South to complain about having no. Um, uh, Patrick's Day Parade. There was no St. Patrick's Day Parade. And somebody sponsored the parade and invited her to be Grand Marshal. And she went in one of Ellen's cars at the start of the parade with Mom, who absolutely thrilled the two of them, had the most wonderful day. And all because, you know, Anne had complained about, let's have a... And of course, she came home this year, uh, just before the lockdown, called the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which was cancelled, and managed to get back on a a plane to Boston before the final flights to, to America were stopped. So Anne, I, I, you know, I wish the best of luck and I hope uh, I see her soon. She booked, she booked her for Christmas, so I hope I can say. Grand is still in Brazil, uh, and of course my, my poor brother Miles is in lockdown in, uh, in uh, May. Uh, and even in May, there's no breaking of the lockdown. And Des, my other brother, he killed me for telling you, He's a fanatic of fishermen, and there's his heart going to that he's missing the, the mayfly on Sheila. And uh, I'm not I'm not attributing this to him, but it's a suggestion that people from Northern Ireland come across the border and take the trout um, with the mayfly, um, and without any uh, any of the chastisement for his Desi car. So. Yeah. I, 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 that didn't come from Desi, does it? No, anyway, there's a few anomalies would. in things. <laughs> and that's just the way things are going. And again, they are the stories that you will be telling in a few, year, few years' time. John, it was great thank, It was great talking to you. You gave us a good insight Thanks, into what it's like in London and what's going on over there. And indeed, it's not much than here. And uh, when you think of it, it's hard to imagine, to imagine that everybody rich, famous, poor, the Pope, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. all in the same circumstances. We, we yeah, each yeah. and every one of us, man, woman and child, are in threat by this virus. It's a real yeah. leveller, isn't it's it? Universal. It is. It's a real leveller. It's a leveller. Uh, it's a it is and it's opening yeah, our minds I'll out up to all sorts, sorts of things and uh, change our lifestyle, as you say, um, yeah. for the better. I think it's because just before you go on, something. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just before you go, I want yeah. to uh, 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 admire your hairstyle because um, I don't know who's doing it at the this lockdown. Because um, my uh, one of my children uh, clipped me the other day, and I look like something out of Belson because the barbers are all stuff. But you look magnificent. <laughs> Thank you. We've got headphones in here as well. Look, the whole lot. Well, the whole. I tell you one thing. If, uh, I want to find out who's doing your hair so that. Um, the next time there's a lockdown, I can get mine done. <laughs> John, there's going to be no more lockdowns after this one, please. And um, once again, great stuff with your Daily Mail column and your articles in the Thank Daily you. Mail. Thank you, I'm still going um, in isolation. Yeah, they're still going in isolation. Oh, another, thing which, another thing worth mentioning is that all of us in newspapers, um, and I don't know how things are going themselves, but um, a huge collapse in, in advertising. The Daily Mail... Um, Believe it or not, Daily in Britain uh, sold six million quid's worth of, um, and that's sterling, uh, ads for uh, uh, cruises, holidays uh, to Ireland, the Golden Square, and all of that's vanished because the, in the travel industry collapsed, 
And as a result, we all have a nice uh, dear John letter from our proprietor, Lord Waldemere, asking us to take a pay cut, which in the circumstances is not nearly as severe as people who are completely without work or, or being made off or made redundant or furloughed and so on. So I'm, a, I'm one of the lucky ones. I mean, I'm scribbling away and we're still paying me. They'll find me out. Yeah. They'll find me out. <laughs> well, well done. I'd like to say thanks once again to our cabin man in London. Um, well done with the book. I'm no one to gossip, but it's up there. It's a great book, John. We were at the book launch. Uh, one of your book, your book, um, yeah, you did nice me, which, We yeah. did, yeah. It was great. Gone worldwide too. The interview, John. All I can say is, till we meet again in Cavan, take care and be safe. And thank you. And, be, and same to you. God bless you.